Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. I'm sure you've seen my friend Dustin before. If you haven't, go back and look at some of our videos because we've shot some pretty radical cars from you. The Camaros that we've shot, certainly the Bonkers, wide, 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 wide Chevelle. Yes. Without question, I know you know this is a builder. By far the most radical thing you've ever built. Yes. And I'll preface it, you guys, with the intent of this car. It was a project started, I know, eight years ago. Eight years ago, 2015, November 2015. The intent was to go compete for Riddler. It was. Good, bad, ugly, beautiful, call it what you want. I know some of you guys are gonna hate this car and some of you guys are gonna love it, you yeah. know, but it's- Everybody's got an opinion. And personal opinion from the perspective of having been an artist most of my life, really great art, in my opinion, it causes a response. You don't just go, oh yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Number one, what year is the car and was it a clean one when you started with it? This is a 1969 Plymouth Roadrunner. It was a very clean car when we started it. In the very beginning, we weren't gonna go for the Riddler, like the first like six months of the build. We, we weren't going there, but I had intentions on making it a really nice car. Yes, this is a 69 Plymouth Roadrunner, but there isn't one panel on this car that wasn't handmade. Like the roof, that was a flat piece of sheet metal that got put through a plenishing hammer for hours and hours and hours and hours and made a roof. And every piece of sheet metal on this car is like that? It's Every all piece of handmade. sheet metal is handmade, yes. Wow, Dustin, yeah. so, my God, dude, the, I didn't know that. Yeah, Andy Turone is one of my sheet metal fabricators. He flat piece of sheet metal, built a frame out of one by two and then handmade an entire hood. We actually built two. And the first one we didn't like, so this is the second one. Every, every, Radical, yeah. dude, I had no idea. Yeah. You built your own chassis for this. This yeah. isn't a, any aftermarket no. company. This is you guys. Yeah. As far as chassis fab, it's a pretty simple chassis. It's a four link with a independent front suspension on air. Sway bars front and rear, so the car will handle and drive. But it's not some crazy wazoo suspension. The air system that's on it, it it's powered by Rytec. Okay, it's got a got it. Rytec valve block in it with uh, Rytec shockwaves. Um, so it makes it a drivable yeah, so car. Drivable car, but the, the actual air system controlling the air suspension is controlled by, it's called a ride controller. It's badass. It can control every aspect of the car. So ride part. is only part of yes. what it controls. controls. Mm -hmm. Got it. Radical. Yep. We do these things all the time, so it's usually pretty easy for me to know our direction Actually, we're going yeah. in, but this car is so bonkers. Yeah, it's over the top. The detail in this car is uh, out of control. Look guys, uh, the car, it's about 95% complete. It won't be 100% complete until probably two hours before SEMA starts. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but at least you're not gonna be pushing it into no, SEMA. No. I've already it, heard the yeah, car. Yeah, it runs and drives. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've already scratched the rotors. Uh, the, the rotors are fully painted, color sanded and buffed. People yeah, which by the way, you guys, we're gonna do some slow, like idle kind of driving today. This is yeah. This is pure total show car right now. Yeah, At some right point, now. it'll be different than 100%. that. 100%. Let's pop the yeah. hood and- Yeah, and, yeah and let's, get, let's get the hood up. Not taking anything away from the mechanical on this car, but there's there's a lot less mechanical components than there is to all the metalwork, yes. paint, body fabrication, crazy. 100%. Not even to talk about your friggin' interior on this car. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, you guys, this is a eight year project that well, 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 well north of a million dollars, like way over a million dollars. I mean, even that. Yeah, let's, o let's open the hood. I'm, I'm waiting for you to reach in and grab <laughs> a latch. And yeah. You know, you build, you build a lot of cars and, and then there's always the special ones, right? And this was always intended to be one of those special ones. To compete for Riddler, to even make yeah. grade eight, let's say, right? Yeah, you, yeah. It's you, gotta be like tastefully well done, but over the, the, the top. top. And it has to be perfect. I mean, one little- Flawless. Flawless, one little nick, one little anything. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, the car's not done. We have, I'm gonna say we have four or 500 hours worth of paint work left to do before SEMA to, uh, to go into Battle of the Builders because over the process of building it for eight years, I mean, the car was wrapped in plastic its whole life, but still, you work in until 1 a.m. in the morning trying to get things done, you, you drop a panel on the ground and you repaint it three hours before you leave to California, you know? And he just did that, he's <laughs> yeah. saying that because he just did that with this panel here. Yeah. Saturday night, Saturday night before you had to be on the road eight, leaving for eight, here. 8.30, it was about to install the panel and it slipped out of my hand and hit the ground and fixed it, repainted it, cleared it, put it back on and it's it's not done and, and uh, you know, but yeah, there's things like that. Things have got to be perfect. So uh, what do we have here? Start with the motor. We? You know, eight years ago when we started the project, they didn't really have like the red eye or the demon or the elephant. They didn't have anything like that. Yeah. There was really no Dodge power plants that you can call, order, and put in. At the time, the biggest thing was the 392 Hemi. 
We got a 392 Hemi uh, Bone Stalker. We found a set of dart heads and bullet uh, ground us the cam for it and uh, put an Eagle rotating assembly in it and made it what we could and put a, put a 2.9 Whipple on it. And yep. you know, to be completely honest, guys, I, I don't know what boost it's making yet. The pulley, the drive setup, it should make about eight pounds. The car should produce right around 700 horsepower. But you haven't got a dyno with it's it It's not dynoed. It's yeah. not, dude, I put a tune in it. It drives, it runs, like it idles. Base, let's idle base, this I, thing let's, along. Let's idle it, you know, you can drive it, you know, but you're not, you're not gonna get in it yet. So I'm curious, just knowing what you've built, what's your intent plan power-wise? Where do you expect uh, it to I be? I think uh, how nice this car is, I don't I don't think the owner will ever just be like, you know what, I'm gonna go fucking rip this thing around like the green Chevelle. I'm not gonna go do burnouts in it. I'm not gonna, the whole underside of the car is fully painted, color centered and buffed in three different colors and the, the time that's been spent under there. Yeah. So I, I think we'll, we'll put a respectable 550 to 600 horsepower to the ground. And anybody that's like, well, that's not a lot of power, a lot of people watching, I don't think you've ever driven a vehicle with 600 horsepower, to be honest. 600 horsepower is... is yeah, if you say it, it's, it's not much power, yeah, then you probably never mounted the throttle on Exactly. Because they, it is. So then what is it made up to transmission and rear end so, on the car? So uh, it's got a Tremec T56, American powertrain, handles roughly 700 horsepower at full tilt yeah, mm -hmm. on the trans. Yeah. So again, intentions of this thing was never to make a thousand horsepower, I get it. right? It's got a nodular nine inch Ford, billet everything. There was really on this car, there was expense was never a thing. This is like zero questions asked, well north of a million dollar bill. Oh yes. I yes. mean, yeah. and I'm being conservative on that. Yeah. I mean, come you on. You know, and, and, and you go, how, how, how? You know, because people are going to say that. Guys, just in parts today, if you had to order every single one of these parts that's in this car, you're $200,000. Right. Or, or real close. Right. And that isn't the imported leather from Italy and just all the little crazy things. So it's- Or making- A handmade a hood. A whole body a and out a quarter of fan. shit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I want to thank Raycon for sponsoring today's episode. Raycon's celebrating their six year anniversary of being in business. What I'm looking at and showing you today are their noise isolating earbuds, but they offer a whole array of products from headphones to speakers, tech products for your home. The audio quality of these is just great. This is as good, if not better, than most of the options I've personally heard out there. The ones I have here are carbon black, but when you look on their website, you're gonna see a multitude of colors. So if you wanted to have red or blue or something more interesting and fun, you could do that. I love the fact that they offer a 32 hour battery life. That's something that I can't say I've seen with other products. And if you look at the pricing, you'll find they might be a bit more affordable than a lot of the other options out there. I really like the fitment of them. They fit super comfortably in my ear, super easy functionality, and I'm definitely not a tech guy, so I, I, I appreciate that about them. As a thank you from Raycon to everyone that supported them in the past six years, Raycon's offering a 20% off everything on their site with select products at 40% off. Celebrate Raycon turning six with their biggest sale of the year going on right now. If you head over to buyraycon.com slash autotopia and use the code birthday, you'll get 20 to 40% off site-wide. All right, you guys, let's go for a drive. To, to be completely honest with you, um, the first time I started and drove it was yesterday. Really? Right? Yeah, yeah, we're still working on interior and I was like, well, I've fired up. I literally fired up and drove it around my building complex, just, you know, fucking. Like, idle, yeah, but that idle. had to feel good yeah, to yeah, be doing good. that you know, after eight years. It's like having a child. You're, you're watching this thing grow in the back corner and everybody's coming in going, when's this thing gonna be done? When's this Holy. thing gonna be done? Yeah. And to be honest, everything actually works very well. I think it's pretty dialed. I think you could probably get in and drive it right now if, you know, we really wanted to. Right. Um, except I don't have a passenger seat done yet. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah, still yeah, totally. stitching that back at the shop. So six piston wheel woods, 14 inch rotors, yep. full manual yeah. brakes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not too much of a guy you're gonna see a lot of boosters and electric brakes and I'm just with you. give me some manual brakes that you know when you hit the pedal they work they work um, dude i'm 100 percent with yeah. you all the master cylinders are underneath the dash and it's all cantilever right because the, the, there's not a whole lot of room under there for two brake master cylinders a clutch master cylinder so we built everything on a cantilever basis and the ratio that we did is amazing because i mean you can get in and hit the brake and the clutch and it's so soft. Right on point. So soft. And so probably a bitch for serviceability, be it well, under the dash. You know what? The whole top gauge panel is all held on with magnets. You just literally lift it off. We we thought about all those small little things, and uh, I think we thought things out very well. Yeah. You know? This isn't still original that, stuff. It is, dude. So Come on. I, the owner of the car goes, you can do whatever you want. Whatever you want to the car. I want 
an original grill. We can get him on the phone right now. He'll tell you, I want the original grill. I was like, George, I can't use an original grill on this car. It's one of my favorite things about the car is it still kept its face, you it, know, yeah, like. It, so you can, you still know it's a Roadrunner. Dude. And, and there's been so many body mods to the car. People think it's the RR, it says Roadrunner, it doesn't. It says Roy Roy Runner. Runner. The name of the car <laughs> is the Roy Runner. Um, and it, it even has abs on the bottom of the car. We bead rolled and it, it's crazy. Let's just go with fenders and quarters yeah. right now, yeah, right? You guys we'll start, made all this out of sheet metal. Well, we'll start at the front and go back. The handmade bumpers, right? The handmade chin spoiler there. Try to do it tastefully around the edges, you know. The car is pretty square up front, so we try to match that with the bumper and, and, and keep the lines flowing. In the front bumper there, that is the actual airbox. The tops of the front fenders, the tops of the doors are factory from point to point. We put the fenders through the plenishing hammer and we, we stretched the front fender an inch and a half here in, in, the, in the bubble, right? So um, very gradually through here. Then we took the body line and we moved the body line up on the car about three eighths of an inch from factory. And the reason we did that was when we chopped the top, me and George are standing and, and it's sitting on my body cart and we're looking at it from a distance and we're like, man, the body line looks too far, too far down on the car when the top came down. So, so you needed to bring it up. Uh, we, we brought the body lines up three eighths of an what inch. What a trip, dude. Yeah. And the body line going across just the fender or? Um, so on a Roadrunner, there is no body line on the door. Right, and, we, and we, we kept it that way. The door itself is pretty damn stock. The only thing that we've done, the lower rocker has been extended on the car. I don't remember, it's two or three inches. We've uh -huh. extended the rocker. Uh -huh. And then on the front fender, we created a body line and extended the front fender. Bring uh, the whole car down. Yeah, bring the whole car down. Uh -huh. We widened the rear quarters an inch and a half. So from the top, there's a cut, cut and widened. add metal, widen and, it out. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And then okay. also, through the plenishing hammer that we made the hips wider per se, the, the rear quarters. So not only wider here, here, but then also you bring out the bow a little yep. bit. Of course, oh. you could tell the um, the rear body line as it comes from the door, comes from damn near nothing. And then in the middle, we not just raised the body line up, but we oh. we also made the body line, I guess, thicker fuel, wider if I you will. I get it. Is this also raised it up is. from, it is. Uh -huh, yep. to match bolt, bolt, up to, to, uh -huh, to uh -huh. Took the rear quarter, because we extended the rocker in the front fender, we extended so you the, add metal we, here. we added metal there. We added, I want to say three inches in the front to, yeah, I don't know, half inch in the rear to kind of give it that wedge mm -hmm. shape, if you will. Mm -hmm. And if you know anything about the Roadrunners, the Roadrunner has this wicked, like, the tail light is at a real wicked yes, angle. Yes, yes, yes. You know, we extended the rear quarter as well, brought it out, I don't know what it was, two inches or something, and then, I don't know, I don't like the angle of the factory rear. It's a little mm. too much for my liking. But you still kept the angle well, to, to, to honor the, the road runner, runner yep. rather than like flattening it or yep. doing, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and then yeah. we, of course, you know, a little handmade spoiler, tastefully done, I think. Very much so. Yeah, it kind of matches the front of the car, right? The same, the same point. very uh, subtle, dude. You yeah, could have so, gone, you could have easily done four, five, six yeah, inches. Yeah, and... you wanted it super subtle. Mm -hmm. We made this body line more prominent. Factory, this kind of comes straight over into the deck lid and how it rolls kept off. the beautiful shape of the back the window. window. So the window, the back window is 100% factory back window. We chopped the roof. I think it was an inch and three eighths. It took it down an inch and three quarter overall. And then we took three eighths out of the back. When doing that, we thought, oh, you know, we'll reuse the roof, we'll reuse, you know, A and, you know, B pillar. Nothing lined back up, right? So we're like, yeah, we'll cut here. You now we're like, screw it. Let's make our own pillars, let's make our own roof. And so that's what we did. So we tipped the, the front A pillars in like 10, 12 degrees, not just back, but we tipped them in. Of course, when doing that, you gotta tip in the B pillar. The back window though is factory. The front window, besides it, it's still a 69 Roadrunner front window, but it, it is, it is cut down. A lot, so much work in the window openings to, to get them to fit that way. And that back window, man, that is like the iconic Plymouth Roadrunner back window. I mean, there's not another window on any one of these cars that is shaped nope. like that. I agree, dude. Yeah, it's I, beautiful. Yeah. The back of the car, so again, handmade, you know, rear bumpers, um, handmade tail lights. Uh, the tail lights I got a lot of time into. And all the trim. All, all the trim around the back. We were like, you know, the back of the car was just really big and tall. And we're like, man, what can we do to break it up? Right. When the new Dodge Charger came out, right? I'm, I'm sitting behind it one night, you know, heading home from work and I, and I see the shape of the tail light. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. So that's what that's off. And then yeah. I was like, man, you know what would be cool? I guess if we if we did that, let's just do center exit exhaust using some Spintech mufflers. It's all a uh, four inch oval. It goes all the way up over the rear end. And uh, I mean, the bottom of the car is just 
spectacular, but uh, yeah. you know, keeping the body lines nice and tight, you know, uh, we try to keep a little bit tighter than an eighth inch gap everywhere, as, as you can see. You know, if, if the gaps aren't perfect, that's Just my fault. wild. What are the wheels on this car? So, wheels um, and sizes yeah, and tires um, and all that. Alan Budnick, uh, Budnick Wheels. Mm -hmm. I know Alan really well. I call him one day and I'm like, hey, for the Roadrunner, I, I'm looking to have some one-off wheels made. And he's like, yeah, what, what are you thinking? And I'm like, you know, I, I kind of want to do like a, like a hot rod European feel, you know, more modern style wheel, you know, with some old hot rod feel. Uh, you know, I was drawing some shit on a napkin and I sent to Alan, I said, what do you think? He's like, ah, we'll make it work. <laughs> I don't know, a couple of weeks later, he sends me a rendering. Of a, of a wheel and uh, never really seen anything like it. Yeah. The rears are a 24 by 14. Holy um, shit, yeah, dude. Yeah, the car's so low, I guess, you know, it's, you can't tell. You but can't if you, tell. Yeah, they, they are. The, and the fronts are a, a 22 by 11. Chrome wheels, chrome the Plymouth, chrome the front grille, chrome the, the little RRs underneath the hood, little uh -huh. pistol grip. So uh -huh. when we bought the car, it had a pistol grip. Hurst, love it. right? So we kept it and I just chromed it. And I love it. Yeah. What is it, a 405 oh, then? So getting thing? back to the tire, sorry. It's a 395, <laughs> 25, 24. I wanted to put the 405, which I have a set up the shop if anybody uh, needs a set. Yeah. And the car was fully painted. It was already, you know, the, the, the underside is fully painted. And, and it was like, nah, I, nope. So I found a set of 395s. Unbelievable. Um, and then the, the fronts uh, are a 275. 3022. It's funny, dude. There's so many choices on this car that are, I don't know how else to say it, ballsy choices. Yeah. Like every choice on this car is, oh, you're going to love this or you're going to hate, hate this. It. Oh, absolutely. Like, dead nuts honest with you, dude. Seeing this car in person, and I'm sorry that you guys can only see it here. Hopefully you'll get to see it at SEMA or one of the other shows it shows up at. It makes a lot more sense in person. Yeah. Got to be honest. Yeah, you know, I was I was kind of worried about that because sending the photos and videos to friends and, and family and, and, and nobody's really given me a straight answer. It's other, hard to, man. Other than like, God damn, that thing's wild. It's or, hard. Like, it's, to, it's super clean or... You need some time with it. Like what we're doing today, you yeah. need some time with it. You know, and, and look, dude, there's been a million cars built, right? You've filmed a million cars and I've built a million cars. And yeah, dude, we, yeah. we just try to do something a little bit different. This was actually George's idea. He was like, dude, I want to put a stripe on the side of the car of something Plymouth. And back then, if you look at the Plymouths, they had something similar. Mm -hmm. Well, we just took it and made it a lot bigger and a lot different. You know, the, the name of the car, Roid Runner, was always the name of the car since the beginning. <laughs> Great <And> we, name. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we messed around with fonts and graphics and designed our stuff and made it, painted it in, and now the car is branded Roid Runner. Awesome. The stripe on the hood, man. I'll get shit for that too, you know? Like the white Camaro. Why did you put one stripe Why down the side of the car? Stripe? Ah, fuck, yep. dude. There's a thousand Camaros. I'm just trying to be a little different. So interior is a little, what you would say, bonkers. You want to drop the hood? Yeah. Here, I'll let you do it. All right. Go ahead and close the hood, Sean. Just hit the, hit the hood and close button there. There you go. <laughs> Why is this so satisfying? And, and just hold it until it, it all stops making noise. And there you go. Now, if you want, we're showing interior, go ahead and scroll over on the iPad screen. Just swipe, just like you do on your phone. There you go. Hit the dome light button, upper right-hand corner. There you go. Oh, dude. <laughs> if you want, go ahead and turn on the running lights as well. Right oh, yeah. there. There you go. Running lights are on. And everything's controlled from this iPad. Everything is 100% controlled from the iPad. Curious question. Is this, because yeah. it looks like it's so flushed in, is it removable if you ever have to update Absolutely. or anything? It is. 100%. And the car has Wi-Fi, right? So it's got a hotspot. So really? We can, yes. We can update <laughs> it straight in the car. Like it's got Wi-Fi right now. <laughs> Charge pad there underneath the armrest and throw your cell phone on there and charge your phone. I mean, there's not one thing in here that's from something else, is there? The only thing that is from something is that shift handle, and it was in this car when he bought it. And except you and you except we, it. we machined it a little bit, made it a little bit sharper, sharper and, that, uh -huh. and, and then You sure it. did. Yeah. But other than that, everything in the entire car is handmade. Oh yeah, even, even the AC vents God. are handmade. <laughs> really? The vents are yeah. you guys making them? And it has the this, this smell good. So it smells like mint or forest or... Yeah, you guys, try this one on. It, it, when you blow air out of this thing, it actually smells. He's got different choices of making it... Yeah, and uh, you can I mean, pick the choices and... Is this the electronic system you were talking about where everything's yes. controlled through here? So it's, yes. is it an app loaded onto the iPad? It is. And it's called Ride Controller. It piggybacks. You can do as many circuits as you want. Like this car, I think it's uh, 48 circuits. It runs four, It can run 48 different 
things. So like the hood opening, closing, yep. the, the rear deck, deck opening, opening and closing, closing, all the lighting, your audio. You said the guy that owns this car is a really tall guy, but he's long in the legs yeah. and short Yeah, yeah, top. George is a very tall individual and has super long legs. So if you want, move that seat back. Is it a, nor it yeah, is right a normal there. release? Yep. I'm shocked. Go ahead, all the way back. There you go. Sean's a pretty tall guy and he can't push that clutch in all the way, right? No. Nope. Nope. And you need a little bit more reach on the, on the steering column. See where it says steering column out right next to the running lights? Right there. You gotta be kidding oh, yeah. me. It's got a telescoping wheel in it. That's sick. Plus you got a tilt. mechanical oh, yeah. tilt. A little tilt, yeah. Well, I didn't know if you had a button here that yeah. was gonna make. <laughs> yeah, no, mechanical tilt. Anything, headlights, tail Jeez, lights, bro. fans. There's a button for the amps have fans in them. Cause you got massive audio going massive on Massive audio, so you can turn on the whole car. The center console, by the way, is, dude, this whole arm piece here is gorgeous. Yeah, we try to make it look like it's free-floating, you know. Did you yeah, guys handmade. start with some sort of a seat? No, those are handmade. You Darren. guys just made a Dar seat out Darren, of the... Darren handmade that bad boy. The metal frame is Procar, but there is nothing... None of this is plastic. This is all wood. This is all handmade wood. Oh, shit, you're wood. not yeah. kidding. No, that's all. Everything, the whole, everything. Dude, I just assumed this was all no. plastic framework. There's no here. plastic in the entire car. Every, every oh, single boy. thing in the car is wood. The only plastic, I guess, is what we call the jewelry box, right? Because when you look inside the amps, it looks like jewelry, so. Yeah, it sure does. Uh, yeah, the, the tops, that, that's not glass, that's, that's plexi, but. How many hours in this car? Oh, I have no, I, my guess, if I had to put a number on it, it's probably somewhere around 25,000. 25,000 hours to see what we see here. Yeah. I mean, Darren worked on the interior for four years straight, never doing anything else. Seriously? Yeah. That's all he worked on was this car for yeah, four, four years, years straight on the interior. Yeah, Holy I mean, cow, talk I mean, about at, a man look, with patience. Said, yeah, look at the door panel, man. Look at that thing. Ridiculous. And this is starting with nothing, right? Nothing. Shaping nothing. wood, building just it. Because it's all wood and it, underneath, and I And it's assume. all handmade. Everything you see Nothing's is, machined. No, it's handmade out of wood. Like remember I told you like this right here? It's all on magnets, this just lifts off so we can get. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And that's where your masters are that, at is that's under where the this owners. console, uh -huh. this panel here. Yeah. The work behind the interior is just out of control. Darren thinks there's somewhere right around <coughs> 4,000 individual pieces that to made this made it all, yeah. Even the what back about of, the steering wheel? Spark Industries machine that wheel for this car. What's one thing you don't see on that that you would see on a full wrapped steering wheel? Where's the stitch? Wouldn't there be a stitch no, that's like what a seam? I was just looking for it. I, I mean, I see a seam. So, Darren, crazy ass, machines an eighth inch groove all the way around in the steering wheel so he can tuck the leather in so there is no Come on. stitch. Yeah. Even the back of the seat has a light to shine on the subwoofer. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. You guys, try this one on for size. You'll notice it will have a passenger seat. They just like. We're not done. They're not there yet. It, mm -hmm. Will the seat be in there for SEMA? Oh, absolutely. It will be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's okay. a, it'll probably be done by this Friday, my guess. I mean, look at the, the speaker wires that's coming out of the amps. Like no, everybody's like, oh, those are sick tubes, man. You ran the that's you ran, wire. You ran the wire through the tube. And I'm like, no, dude, that's that's, that's the actual wire. Yeah, that's solid copper. Whoa. Solid copper. Let's open the yeah. truck up too, because yeah, yeah. I know that's just as finished. Is this wood too? No, that this is plastic. We found plastic yeah, we on the yeah, car. You know, okay. That, that, that is plastic. It has a C-Tech CS3 in it. They're booster packs and like hidden away somewhere? Yeah, they're all they're hidden behind hidden these the panels. panels. Yeah. Are these the magnetic kind of panels? Yeah. They are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is all magnetic. So you guys usually, you know, at this point we would say, let's put the cameras in and go for a drive. But the truth is this car's it's total show car right now. What we're three weeks away yeah, from seeing right three weeks, now. yeah. We got Grand National right after yeah. that. I mean, so you guys, what we're gonna do is at least idle it a little so you get to hear what it sounds like. Dustin will probably give it a little blip or two. That's what we're gonna do yeah. right now.
Well, I'll end it this way. I'm sorry we didn't get to drive it, and we talked about it at the beginning throughout the video that this really is true show car stuff right now. You know, the, with the goal of going to Riddler, didn't do that, but they're definitely going to SEMA and Grand National and some of the other big events with the intent of winning awards. So I totally get it. And at some point, you know, Dustin will turn this car into a car you can actually drive down the road. And at that point, I hope we get the opportunity to reshoot it. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm a big fan of what Dustin and his company, Nostalgia Hot Rods, does out in Vegas. And look forward to following and keeping up with what they do. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. All right, man, later.